but compared to modern M5s, it doesn't feel overly... Ladies and gentlemen, 2007 BMW M5. This is the E60 generation. We're actually gonna be driving that and comparing it to the F10, its successor. Make sure you're comparing all the M5s today out here in North Carolina. And check out the playlist to see every generation lined up. Now, I am super excited to drive this because, I mean, this came out in 2004. So 20, 2004, 2010 is when this was produced. And I remember watching this on Top Gear and being like, oh my God, this is my dream car. It was like the first time I had a realistic dream car because as a kid, it was like Lambos and Ferraris that I'm never gonna own. And here I was like, this thing has a V10, five liter V10 naturally aspirated. It's super fast, it's super badass. It has space for my family and kids in the, in the back because I was a practical little middle schooler. And I can't believe it. I'm finally driving it here today. I'm gonna to tell you how it drives. Now, first, let's go over the mods because the owner has modified this tastefully. We have Bilstein EDC shocks, Dynan springs, Dynan sway bars, and a mix of PowerFlex bushings throughout the vehicle. We've got that Corsa exhaust right there, an AFE intake, and Porsche calipers. But what you wanna know is how she drives. Very nice. He's also done this CarPlay Android Auto retrofit. But the centerpiece is this S85 five liter naturally aspirated V10, pushing out 500 horsepower, 385 pound feet of torque. We have this ECS Teflon shifter. And other than that, car's essentially stock. Now we're gonna focus on the driving dynamics because the reliability is not part of my review. These engines, these vehicles are not known for their reliability. But with a V10 like this, you can probably accommodate some shortcomings. Starting off in regular mode, you you actually have 400 horsepower and a much lazier throttle response. It's, much, it's a very much a dual personality kind of car where you can put it around town, be comfortable. And then when you press this M button, it weightens up the steering, throttle response much more aggressive, and it gives you the full 500 horsepower from the glorious engine. You'll see that MDM light comes on as well. He actually did the uh, Euro MDM tune, which gives you a little bit more tail action because in the US, they had a much more conservative MDM mode. We have these active bolsters on as well. You can adjust the setting right here. So let's get out of this CarPlay thing or Android Auto thing and press that. Comfort, normal, sport. And in sport, when you're turning, these active bolsters will actually push you, keep you in place in your seat. Let's see how those fare today on the corners. This M5 is still rear-wheel drive. We have a six-speed manual transmission, although you can also get this with a seven-speed SMG. Apparently in Europe, you can only get it with an SMG, and in America, you get the, the six-speed manual, which is awesome, thank you very much. And this is the first M5, actually, with rack and pinion steering, because the previous generation, the E39, still had a recirculating ball, which to many of you might be surprising, and that's a whole discussion on that review right up here. These bolsters are a very cool, it's a neat gimmick, but there isn't enough resolution and enough response. So you enter a corner, you feel your body move, and then you feel it inflate, and the inflation, it lags the actual G-forces, and there aren't, you can feel like a few different steps where it'll, it'll inflate to based on how hard you're turning, but you can feel each of the steps, and with a higher resolution, it would be much smoother. It's still cool, it's a cool feature. You know, i probably keep it in a lower setting, or I don't know, only use it when you're really aggressively driving. First getting used to it, it might actually take some focus away from the road. But not to tease you guys any longer, let's see how this engine sounds. Oh, 
line a little bit past 8,000 rpm you gotta love that oh my god This car looks so unassuming from the exterior. It's so gentlemanly, because even with the V10, it doesn't like scream and rip your head off with the, the volume inside the, the cabin. This is like classy executive saloon with a wild side, and I love that. Gotta give it the throttle a little bit more on these downshift lifts to really match it properly. But a very good, easy to modulate throttle, not too, uh, not too on off switch by any means. long throws with the shifter but it's nice and mechanical and you don't really have ambiguity with regards to which gate you're entering decently tight not overly so the steering is much more precise than in the E39 you're feeling more connected And with regards to suspension modes, when you press the M button, it actually puts it in this first EDC. That's their adaptive damper technology. And we can try it on the second, but the owner told me that with these aftermarket um, suspension components, it doesn't work too well. It gets a little bit chatty. Yeah, I would agree. It's a little bit too stiff. You can feel me pogo sticking a little bit. So that middle setting is where we're going to keep it. That's where it feels best. It's still sporty. Actually, let's see how it feels totally off. You can tell this is not OEM because the suspension is, it is a little bit over damped. For a car like this, it's, it's not uncharacteristic, but you can tell it's it's not how they originally designed it. But if you want to bomb some canyon roads, that's probably a welcome addition, a welcome change to the way it drives. <laughs> These active bolsters, it, sometimes it's like one side, sometimes it's both sides kind of. Yeah, interesting. I'm trying to figure these out, these bolsters. Here we go. The steering is quite light, but the way the front end responds, it's not overly sharp. I did think it was gonna be a little bit crazier inside in the driver's seat. You can appreciate the noise without it over overwhelming you and being the, the single thing that drowns out everything else. Again, a gentleman's executive saloon. The 
first inch of brake travel does absolutely nothing, and then it starts to grab. Now this, this feels very much like an evolution of the E39, in that the E39, it's softer, it's less sharp, and this doesn't overdo it. This is still very much part of that same lineage. The engine is even more epic, right, than the V8, the five liter V8 in the E39 is a phenomenal engine. This takes it up a notch. The sound, the way it eggs you on as you build those revs. But remember, it's still an M5, right? So these aren't gonna be as sharp and communicative as the smaller M3. It's not numb, it's not like the modern numbness. Um, you know, weight-wise, these are a little bit over 4,000 pounds, and you feel the heft. With the suspension changes, you know, it's probably sharper and more responsive than it otherwise would be in stock configuration. But the M5, the way that I perceive it, both this generation and the generation that came before, is it's a vehicle where it, it can really serve as your daily, but you're also gonna have a good time. It's not, it's not trying to wow you and impress you with really sharp driving dynamics, but it's going to inspire confidence as you bomb down the Autobahn or some other road with sweepers like this one at higher speeds. finding excuses to play with that engine note. The transmission's okay though, it's not, it's not bad, it's also not great. It's, uh, it fits the character of the vehicle. I like the notchiness of it, I like how clear each gate is. You're not really worried about misshifting this. Nice little carbon fiber trim pieces here and there. You know, the infotainment being so large and so low res, you can see the pixelation a little bit. It dates the car. But I mean, when you're driving a car like this with a naturally aspirated V10, that's a small, small price to pay that I think a lot of us would be happy to. But well, my friends, let me know what you think of the E60 M5. We're actually gonna be comparing it right now to this F10, the generation that came right after it. You can find a link to that video in the description and in our M5 playlist. God, I love this engine. You know, it's always cool meeting your heroes. Definitely a car I wanna try driving again in different environments, different roads. Such a cool piece of automotive history. I mean, a V10 naturally aspirated in your, in your five-seater for you and your family. This is before the M wheels got super chunky. There's a nice medium chunk to it. The leather holding up okay. These active bolsters, a cool little gimmick, but you can see that they removed it from uh, subsequent generations because I don't think it um, adds as much value as you might initially think. Still, supercar all around. Big thanks to the owner, Kevin, for letting me review his vehicle. If you want your car reviewed, visit us on jabalandcars.com. Much love, my friends. Let me know what you think of the E60 M5, and I'll see you all in the next one.